Just going to talk, I wanted to have the Mayor of Napier on yesterday, uh, Kirsten Wise, uh, because she believes that the government is failing in its efforts to consult on important new bills. You remember when we talked to Oliver Hartwich from the New Zealand Initiative, we were talking about, and Oliver Hartwich, uh, his argument was that the new law that's going through Parliament at the moment uh, to do with the replacement of the Resource Management Act um, takes the integration of Maori custom uh, into the New Zealand legal system to a new level and it will essentially lead to two types of New Zealanders um, and one type, Maori, will have greater uh, control and rights over it. Well, the consultation process of that, um, says the Napier Mayor, has been badly handled. Um, and that uh, essentially local councils are being split out of two of the biggest bills that will... And believe me, after, you know, the heat and light of this um, baby case today has died down, the two pieces of legislation that will replace the Resource Management Act will still be very much alive. And they will control your life to an incredible degree. They are the Natural and Built Environment, um, well, it will be the Act and the Spatial Planning Act. They are out for consultation. The government have used them to replace the Resource Management Act, or at least two of the three bills that they intend to introduce have been done. Um, you would have heard Oliver Hart, which say, listen, the, 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 the consequences of this are horrendous in terms of creating classes of citizens and concepts of differences in law um, that are just going to have every council simply winding itself in knocks trying to work out what to do. Uh, Napier Mayor Kirsten Wise has uh, on public record as saying, that, listen, we're, we're not even being consulted on this properly. Um, in fact, she said that the submission process being run through the Christmas shutdown throws councillors and their communities under the bus. Um, she joins us this morning uh, from the beautiful city, uh, the Bay City of Napier. Good morning to you, Kirsten. Oh, good morning, Michael. How are you? First of all, congratulations on being re-elected. Um, you've been through some chief executives in your place over the last wee while. Has it been, been a bit of a getting governance back in charge of the ship exercise, has it, Kirsten? Oh, look, it, it, it's just been um, a, a process that we've been working through. We have uh, been working through the recruitment process for our new chief executive um, post-elections and are pretty excited about where we're up to with that, so looking forward to the future. Actually, we're going through that as, as well and uh, for our regional council, Chief Executive Kirsten. And the interesting thing about that is that the recruitment consultants are saying there are 13 chief executive vacancies currently throughout local government in New Zealand. Uh, and that might have something to do with the quality that is turning up. Are you finding the same problem? Uh, with the quality that's turning up, did you say? Well, they, they're suggesting that you won't get as many applications as you should might have because there are just so many vacancies out there. Oh, that's certainly not we, what we experienced. We got a large number of applicants and they were of an incredibly high calibre. So um, that was great. Do you ever find, though, just before I talk to you about the Res Resource Management Act and its replacement, but do you ever find, though, that... The, the, well, it always seems to me, Kirsten, there's a lack of cross-pollination between the public and the private sector. I imagine most of the people that you're going to be interviewing are already working in the public sector and probably in the local government sector. Do we sometimes need to get new blood, new ideas, um, new abilities to be able to manage from the private sector as well into the local government sector? Oh, look, there's certainly some benefits in that cross-pollination. For us here at Napier City Council, with the, the current environment of local government, we actually felt it was really important to have a chief executive that did have extensive local government experience, mm. and that was part of our brief to the recruitment agency. Okay, all right, best of luck to you. Now, um, you are going to be in the forefront, um, at the front line of the new legislation that will replace the Resource Management Act and that you will have to consider on a daily basis or at least your plan as well. What's your problem with the two pieces of legislation currently that are being promoted? So I guess in terms of what my major problem is, it's around the process. Um, and again, we're being, being let down with process. We were let down with three waters and now we're being let down with the RMA, in particular the consultation. Um, both as councils with them proceeding through this Christmas shutdown period, but more importantly, our communities who this essentially is the first time that they have been given any information on it and then they're being asked for feedback over this um, eight-week period. Mm. 
And you're arguing, what, that that's not enough time? They can't possibly be able to digest the, the issues that are involved in that time? They don't have enough detail as to how it's going to work anyhow? Is that, is that it? That's exactly right. As I said, this is the first time the community has been engaged with at all. Um, this is a huge piece of legislative change, um, a lot of information to absorb and to expect our community to engage over the Christmas period when we all know uh, mm. that's, that's a time when we're pretty busy with other, other things um, is completely unrealistic and quite frankly just makes it feel like they're going through a tick box exercise. They are, aren't they, though? Isn't that the practical reality? I mean, if you are going to make the consultation date end on the 30th of January, you are going through a tick box exercise? Well, that's certainly how it feels to me, yes. Yeah, OK. Um, now, the other thing is, uh, this is an activist government, um, and local government has been in its sights um, for quite some time now. Do you get the feeling that the central government just simply doesn't trust you, Kirsten? Oh, I think there's definitely trust issues, and it goes both ways. I don't think there's been a particularly good relationship between central government and local government, certainly the whole time that I've been uh, involved in, in the sector. And there's a huge amount of work that's required to actually build that trust. Yeah, what about local government New Zealand, though? Because they let you down pretty badly over three waters. Um, are, you, are you rebuilding that relationship or not? Oh, we certainly are, and they're well aware of the disappointment um, that a, a, a number of councils experienced through the Three Waters um, process. We um, know for a fact that they fought really, really hard to change the submission period for the RMA, uh, and that was just ignored. So we certainly are continuing to rebuild that relationship with LGNZ. Mm, so even if local government New Zealand don't fall in behind, or they do fall in behind, they're routinely ignored anyhow. That sounds fairly familiar. Um, can I also ask for you, though, the detail of these two bills. Um, earlier in the week, we interviewed the executive director of the New Zealand Initiative, Dr Oliver Hartwich, and he said that there are particularly issues around Mataranga Māori and Te Ao Māori, etc., um, that aren't defined adequately to know what they actually mean, and yet, and that's the point he made, everybody involved in the whole process of your council will need to have be conscious of them for every moment that they make a decision. Um, are you confident that your staff know what these things mean? Not at all. I'm, I'm certainly not confident, and that's... Um what the issue is that not just with the, the RMA bills, but also with the Three Waters and even, you know, with the overarching future for local government sort of reports that have been released, there's a lack of definition and certainly a lack of understanding um, across the board to enable us to actually understand what it is that's being asked of us. Yeah, um, I've heard you cited the Napier City Council, and please don't take this the wrong way, it's not personal, um, as a, one of the reasons why we need three waters, because you've had problems with uh, sort of dirty water coming out of your taps. Um, how do you respond to that sort of criticism from central government? Well, ironically, I'm actually at this very moment in time standing at uh, one of our new bores that we've just commissioned, which is um, has been commissioned to resolve the dirty water issues. So my response to that would be, we know what we need to do and we're doing it. Right, okay. So you've, you've found that got the problem, you've acknowledged the problem, you've found the solution. Can I ask you in that particular case though, Kirsten, what was the problem with the dirty water? It was, it was discoloured water, was it? It was, it, it was dirt or something? It was discoloured water and it was caused by uh, the mandated act to put chlorination in our water supply. So central government essentially caused this issue. Oh. And the chlorination reacted with um, manganese, which is, is in, um, in some of our some of our network, yeah. and that's what was creating the dirty water. So we've had to um, commission two new bores and find a water source that's lower in manganese. Right. So that's a fair bit of infrastructure whack there. How much did that cost you? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, millions and millions of dollars. And all of those, can I ask, under the Three Waters legislation, plus the debt associated with that is going to be taken over by these new entities uh, under the Water Entities Act when it's finally passed, yes? That's correct, yes. So what are you going to do in your day? I mean, what will your council staff do? Run a few libraries? 
um, fix up the swimming pool, that sort of stuff. Well, this is the concern. So obviously we've got the three waters, we've got the RMA, and this is a huge component of what councils are currently responsible for. So what do we get left with? You know, deciding what colour to paint the toilet doors. Mm, um, mm, mm. And the future for local government sort of review that's occurring concurrently uh, will potentially provide some answers. Uh, unfortunately, the, at the moment, that review seems to be raising more questions than answers. So it, it's a pretty uncertain space for us here in local government at the moment. Well, the review that I've read, that local government review, because um, I've had to read it too, unfortunately, as I'm sure you have, is more about co-governance, it seems, than anything else. I would have thought the first thing to be is affordability and rates, but that doesn't seem to be touched on in the cons consultation document that I've seen. Oh, look, I agree. For me, funding actually is one of the, the pivotal issues. If we don't resolve the funding issues, we won't resolve anything. Mm. And I've certainly given that feedback to the independent panel that is in charge of the review and I will be continuing to push that and certainly making that a major component of our submission that we need to make before the end of February next year. Oh, good on you. Okay. Um, and can I just say, uh, Graham Taylor used to be on my council. He was a very good chair of strategy. I see he's still on yours, GK. Um, what's he do there with you? Uh, so yes, GK has come back for a fourth term. He originally wasn't intending to restand, um, but changed his mind. So he he was previously the chair of our finance committee, right? And I've just been doing a bit of succession planning. So he's now in the deputy chair role, so that he can support um, the the other councillors that are coming through that will probably be there for a little bit longer than he will be. Yeah, that's fair enough too. Um, I'm aware of his personal circumstances. Yeah. He's a good lad. Um, he's a good man. Uh, just quietly also... Oh, he's, he's a great man and a great counsellor. Yeah, no, he's, he was he was in Wanganui as well. Uh, can I also just say, um, your town's looking fantastic. Um, I think you and Nelson would be the premier city, but I think you're, you're pipping them at the moment. What, what do you attribute that to? Oh, hey, we have got incredible staff. Our team are so passionate about making sure the city is always looking amazing. Um, I think we're one of the very few council councils that still has our own city services depot. Uh, so we have all our own gardeners yeah. and, um, yeah. and and like our water team are our own people. Yeah. And so they've just got that connection to the city and take such pride in everything they do. Um, and can I say, that's what we brought back in house in Wanganui too, made a massive difference. I think they contracted out again. Contractors don't give you the same, do they? They're only interested in making money at the end of the day and lowest common denominator. Oh, that's exactly right. They just don't have that same pride in the city and commitment to do the best they can. Uh, uh, that's, listen, you speak truth. Thank you very much for joining us, Kirsten. Best of luck with you. Uh, hope to talk to you again in the new year. Look after yourself. Excellent. Cheers, Michael. Okay, bye-bye. Um, that's Kirsten White.